Good evening, Periscope. Hello, everyone. So this is broadcast seven of seven for me in seven days, and I realized it's a seven o'clock. So it couldn't be more perfect if we tried. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're joining me <laughs> to talk about what I've been learning in my first week of broadcasts. It's been a whirlwind. Hello, good to see you all. Greetings, all. I'm so happy to see you. It's been so neat. I've, I've really loved getting to know um, some of you better through Periscope, some old friends, just connecting with you in new ways, new friends. It's been fantastic. So it's neat to sort of see like, oh, like these are the folk who typically come to my Periscopes and this is how we bond. And then fun to see new faces as well. Bethany, glad to be here again. All oh, looking forward to it all day. Wow. No pressure, Lauren. No, that's awesome. I appreciate that so much. Hey, Refresh Restyle. Hey, Jen. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm Lauren from thinkingcloset.com, if I didn't say so. And um, I've gone on a, an incredible journey <laughs> this last week as I've just, I dove head first into Periscope. Oh, hello, Fresh Idea Studio. So, um, Sometimes it feels, oh, thanks. I actually had a little crisis of what to wear because I was just wearing a ratty old t-shirt. Um, so thank you, Michelle. <laughs> it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a wild journey. And I, I know some of you might be thinking like, it seems a little bit crazy to be offering up tips when you're so new to Periscope. But I have learned so very much just doing each one um, daily and I'm just excited to share what I've been learning with you all and also hear your tips because I'm still very much a beginner. Oh, hi, Melissa. Good to see you. I enjoyed your first Periscope last week. Sawdust to Sequins, Crafty Bonds, so many fabulous friends. This is going to be a wonderful chat. Um, and I'm really going to do my best to stick to the quick tips because I realize that we might be here till midnight if we don't roll right through them. Share, I put them up on YouTube. Okay, yeah. And, and I think what we can do question-wise is if you have questions related to what we're talking about, please, or comments, or yes, that's true for me too, throw it in there. But if it's like a new, completely new topic that you have a question about, maybe we can save those for the very end. That way if folk have to go, they can. And if it's like, you know, two hours later, we can cut it off. So we're gonna talk tonight about 20 quick tips for new broadcasters on this fantastic medium of Periscope. Before we dive in, um, I had a couple questions for you guys. So curious to know how many of you, or how many scopes have you guys done? If you've done any at all. So. Have you done zero scopes? Have you done one? I had several of my friends today do their first one today. Okay, one for Refresh Restyle, none, one. Michelle did her first one today, none, zero, zero, zero. Might do one later today. Bouncing Bedlam, I believe in you. One for Jen, one or two. <laughs> my first today, congrats. One for Melissa, nine. Oh, or maybe none yet. Maybe that's what you meant. <laughs> I like the idea of nine though, or none yet. Hi, Camila. And I just see that some of Jen invited a friend. So that's a great reminder for me to remind you, uh, which is one of my tips coming up, that um, it would be wonderful if you could share this broadcast with your followers or on Twitter or on Periscope. And the way to do that is to swipe right on iOS, swipe up on an Android, and just hit that little share button and it'll give you an option. None. That's what I thought. <laughs> but I was still, still very impressive. Um, so yeah, if you can share this broadcast, thank you guys. I think the more heads we have in this room tonight, the more tips we're all gonna glean. And so I appreciate you guys inviting. You can invite individuals if you think of specific people. You can invite everyone in the world. Um, and then you can show love if you're new. Show love through taps. If I say something that resonates with you um, or you're just feeling 
happy, you can tap your screen and an explosion of little hearts will fly up to the heavens, which I don't know about you, but that's becoming one of my favorite things to see are just the floating hearts. It's fantastic. So thanks for the heart love. I love seeing all the colors. Everybody gets assigned a unique color when you enter a scope. So sometimes if there's a lot going on, it's hard to tell which color is yours. So see if you can figure out what color you got tonight with my scope. I know there's a limited number of colors. So some might be duplicates, but each person gets just one. Um, also, random fun fact, this isn't even one of my quick tips. The um, do you guys know about the rule with hearts and how you can sort of work around that rule? I'm going to tell you whether you know it or not. Oh, brown, purple. Yay. So Periscope has a limit of 500 hearts that you can give to a scoper in one, um, at one time. And um, even if your number goes up of hearts, it's really not going to be added to that counter. So, and the way to tell how many hearts you've given is again that swipe right or swipe up and you can see yourself, but there's a workaround. And I did this today for several of my friends who were new to Periscope and I wanted to send them so, more than 500 hearts. Leave the scope for a quick second, come back in, and it resets your count. So, you have unlimited hearts you can give. Don't be limited by 500. I see them coming. Okay, so um, I think, Oh, so many things to say. I published today, oh, thanks for the heart love. Everyone's like, I got more than 500, I'm gonna use them. Um, I published today on the blog, not one post on Periscope, not two, but three, all in a row. I've never done that before, but I had so much to share. And um, you'll see my tips for or just a beginner primer, um, the topic of why I think Periscope is going to be a game changer for bloggers and business owners, which was our scope last night. And then also what we're going to talk about tonight, these 20 quick tips. And um, so I'll be, I'll be walking us through those 20 quick tips. But if you miss something or you um, want to go back to it, you can reference the blog. And all those three posts are living in one place. Um, so you can not only access them from my homepage right now, but also thinkingcloset.com slash Periscope. So they're all there. It'll be your ultimate guide to all things Periscope. If you want to pin it or share it with a friend who's new and has that glazed look over their eyes. So that's, that's where this is going to live. Um, and something that I shared at the beginning of my post, I thought it would be a good little um, entry point for us tonight, um, is the concept of the inner critic. And I don't know about you, but my inner critic likes to rear her ugly head. I've gotten better at silencing her, but I definitely felt um, intimidated when I first started Periscope. And so I thought I would share some of the things that my inner critic said to me about Periscope and continues to say. And I want you guys to type in the comments what your inner critic says to you. So for example, my inner critic likes to say things like, you're not going to be very good at it, so why even try? And she says, you're better off playing it safe, just sticking to what you know. And she also says things like, you just don't have what it takes. So it could be very easy to let that voice take over, right? And just well up insecurities. Other things, no one's going to watch it. Oh, you have a bad southern accent. I love southern accents. You're not going to know what to say or share. No one will show up. Ah, my voice sounds so deep. Interesting. So we have things about our actual voices, people being there, bad northern accent. Interesting about the accents, guys. Um, for the record, I'm sort of an accent fiend, and I love identifying accents and hearing them, so I'll be cheering you on in your unique accent. Um, the house is a mess. I sound so young. Interesting. Yeah, we all have these little, uh, you know, lies that get said to us and keep us from going after our dreams. They might confuse me with Minnie Mouse. My English is not perfect. Yes, the voice thing and the accent as I'm an Aussie. Understands the house being trashed. Me too. Wow. Okay. Well, this is a really helpful feedback. Again, why I love Periscope, because of this wonderful interchange 
Too many filler words. I've been feeling that too. Ooh, I get very critical of myself with um and like. Ditto on the voice. My voice is childish. I also love the Aussie accent. Tons of ums. Oh man. I, I, I struggle with the ums as well. That's something I need to work on. And I, um, ugh, I cringe when I hear them in myself. I don't cringe when I hear other people say them, but I do for myself. I look much younger than I am. Yes, the inner critic is alive and well for so many of us. And I think she can hold us back or he can hold us back from um, pushing forward and taking healthy risks like trying Periscope. Um, the kids are going to interrupt. I'm going to lose my train of thought. Yeah. So all of these things, we have so many roadblocks. But um, I would encourage you all to take active steps to silence that voice. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but I think for me, one way that I was able to push through and do seven in a row was just by giving myself a challenge. Um, and by giving myself, okay, I'm going to do seven in seven days, whether the inner critic likes it or not, I might be a complete failure at it. Nobody might show up. I might be bad at it. I might say, um, a million times, but I've got to do the seven in seven days, right? Cause I set the challenge and that immediately shut up my inner critic. She still tries to come back, but I just, as fast as she came, I try to sh shut her out. So I just want, wanted you all to be aware of what those, that voice is saying to you. That way, when you hear it, you can identify it as a lie. It's false. Rebuke that voice because it's not true. Um, and I think there's just so much potential if we do put ourselves out there through Periscope. I have to do that so much in life. It's so true. The inner critic comes back every day. Girl, you need to be a motivational speaker. Great advice. Oh, I'm glad. Actually, that was on my list of things I wanted to be when I grew up was a motivational speaker. <laughs> so maybe I'm still getting to do it through Periscope. So if you're just jumping in, I know Periscope has a lot of folk coming in and out. I'm Lauren from thinkingcloset.com. We are about to dive into 20 quick tips for new broadcasters and I better get started. <laughs> oh, you already are. So um, the first quick tip that I have for you guys um, has to do with preparation. And um, I think probably one of the best ways to prepare yourself for your first scope, if you're about to give it a go, is um, to watch other scopers, to watch other broadcasters and learn from them. Now, don't watch them and think, oh, I could never be like that. You know, I could never be as good as that person is. Watch that person and learn from them and get ideas. And um, I've been watching, um, uh, Chris Ducker and Nikki Elledge Brown and Regina from By Regina and Pat Flynn and Alex Petit and I've been I've learned so many tips from watching their scopes so if you're new to this and you're not really knowing where to begin I would begin by just entering into this Periscope community and gleaning ideas from other scopers seeing what resonates with you and what doesn't because you got to do you so you're just going to sort of pull the best of from your favorites and incorporate that into your own Periscope style. So that's my first quick tip is to just enter into this community and then, um, yeah, allow that to inspire you in your own Periscope journey. Thanks for the hearts. Second quick tip is to set a time and date for your first or for your next scope and it's not allowed to be next month. <laughs> so set a date sometime in the next couple weeks. And I would even urge you, this has sort of become the theme of the week, to go before you're ready, to um, push yourself to not be fully prepared because that's the beauty of this wonderful um, platform, this social media, I don't even know, like Periscope feels so much more than social media, but that's what's so wonderful about it um, is that we're getting a glimpse into people's very real lives and um, the less scripted the better. So put a date on that calendar. In fact, if some of you want to right now is just accountability, want to write in like, okay, like I haven't done a scope yet or I did one and I'm just struggling to do another one. If you really want to explore this medium as a broadcaster, I want you to type in a day and time right now when you're going to do it. Um, 
and, and try to push yourself to go a little bit sooner than feels comfortable because it's good for you. Jen, I'll be doing one next week. Good for you, girl. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I sort of decided to do my first one on a whim, um, which is, and it was quite impulsive and not what I typically do, but um, deadlines help me get stuff done. A week from tomorrow for Emily. Tonight for Camila TT Crafty. Congrats, girl. That's exciting. So set a date for yourself, set a time, put it on the calendar. I forced myself today. Good. And how did it go? I'm curious. Refresh, restyle. How did you feel like it went? I was extremely nervous and shaking. Tonight. Good for you. I saw your scope, Amanda. It was so good. I was so excited to see you and think, oh, wow, that's the person behind the profile picture I see. And she is fabulous and I want to hang out with her. That's what people are going to be thinking, not what your inner critic is saying. Fun. I laughed a lot. See? Yay. <laughs> that's fantastic. So yeah, set a time and date. Uh, feel free to share it with a friend or share it in the scope. And that way you're going to be more likely to follow through tonight if I have time. Good, guys. Good. Do you have to show your face? No, you don't have to show your face. Um, I think if that feels too risky for you to put your face out there right away, um, you could show a beautiful sunset or you could show um, a craft or project you're working on. So don't mind my husband who's blowing his nose and making a racket in the kitchen. I feel the same way. Great. Okay. Tip number three, choose a focus for your scope. Even if the focus is just to share the sunset or just to share the story of how your cell phone fell into your bowl of cereal or whatever it might be, but try to choose something that you're going to focus on. I think that will help um, sort of give you um, like something to hold on to uh, in a medium that feels sometimes very out of control. Now, um, my focuses have kind of run across the gamut. I, my first scope, I shared about an article that I had read that I loved. Um, I talked about my, our wedding day. I talked about conquering fear. Um, we had a dance party on Monday night. We talked about Periscope last night. <laughs> Yes, family is alive and well, real life on Periscope. So really, we were talking about this last night, like does it have to be about a tip? Does it have to be blogging related? No, you can share about anything you want to, anything that's on your heart. But I would try to choose a focus, that way you don't feel like you're just floating in outer space. Everybody love the dance party, it's coming back. So save the date, Monday, upcoming Monday, 9 o'clock Eastern. We're going to get our dance on again. Um, and, and if you, uh, one last thing with choosing a focus, if that inner critic starts to say like, you don't have anything worthwhile to say, um, I mean, what are you going to share that anybody's going to care about? Just remind her that everyone has a story to tell, especially you. And you can say, Lauren told me that and she wasn't lying. So <laughs> shut, her, shut her down. And then if, if you need me to like follow up and take her down as well, I can. So let me know. All right, quick tip number four. Remember that that time and date that you just set, announce it on your social media channels to spread the word um, or through email. Don't hesitate to reach out to friends and family to tell them when you're going to be on Periscope. Um, I know that that's something that I've done when I thought maybe no one will show up. I know that's a fear of some of yours. So reach out to like a trusted friend or family member. Even just having one person that you know will be there to comment and engage with you will help you to rest at ease and to enjoy it. Because um, I think sometimes it can take away the intimidation factor to have a small crowd, but can be really scary if you feel like you have an empty room. So get the word out there. Don't feel, don't hold back from just sending out a tweet, posting it on Facebook. Um, sometimes I don't know when I'm going to do a scope till just a few minutes before. I still send it out. Um, and so advertise it. You might feel like, oh, I don't want anyone there. You do. That's, that's the joy of this medium. So get the word out there and uh, get some good people in the room who are going to send you hearts like you're sending me and who are going to engage in comments. Even just having one person. I had one scope where pretty much just 
my dear friend Michelle Hickey from Elegance and Enchantment. It was just she and I chit-chatting, and I was so thankful to have her there. And uh, I would wish the same for you. Okay, quick tip number five. And I'm gonna, this has a little show and tell prop. I would recommend, something I've done, is to create a small table tent out of paper, and you can use that just to jot down little points and reminders. Love Michelle, yes, we all do, she's fantastic. So here's my little table tent for this chat, and it's quite small. Um, something that I wrote in my post today that is me preaching to myself is that, that if you find yourself like writing out full sentences, start again because you're not going to want to read off your, off your script unless you're reading a quote or something. But try to just put little uh, reminders. At least for me, that's something that helps me relax and know, okay, if the conversation wanders, which it does on Periscope, and I lose my train of thought, I can come back to this card and remember, oh yeah, next point. Um, and little reminders I'll write for myself is to reintroduce yourself or um, remind them to share. And I kind of write that real big. Otherwise, I would not remember. So let me reintroduce myself. I'm Lauren from thinkingcloset.com, and we're talking tonight about quick tips for new broadcasters, everything I've learned in my first week of scopes. So create a little table tent. I just put it right here next to my phone and it helps me. That might, it might not work for you, but if, if you're someone whose mind can go blank sometimes when you get nervous, that's gonna be um, a buoy that you can cling to when you feel like you're drowning. <laughs> okay, quick tip number six. To avoid giving, oh, people like that tip. <laughs> so me, you're practically an expert now. Thank you. I um, I still feel extremely green <laughs> and new to this, but I think I've just been so excited about this platform that I feel like a sponge, and I'm just trying to soak up as much as I can. And I love um, talking about Periscope with you all and gleaning tips from each other. So. Again, I, I may share something that's complete amateur hour, but hopefully some of this will be encouraging to you. I was teasing. <laughs> okay, so to av tip number six, to avoid giving your viewers motion sickness, stabilize your phone in the vertical orientation using a mini tripod or a tripod. Um, aw giving it back for us with love, lots of love. Um, a mini tripod or a tripod adapter or a cell phone car mount, something that can stabilize your phone. And if you don't have any of those, don't panic. There are actually a ton of tutorials out there on how to DIY your own cell phone tripod. People have used binder clips and rubber bands. And I brought, um, I wanted to show you what I've been using. And um, this is a second one, so I'm we have two cars and we have two of these in the cars and it's a smart tap. It's just a mount that you place on your car dashboard like that um, or just on that sort of right beneath the dashboard, that surface there. So this is like something for the car where you can have hands-free cell phone and I just thought, okay, well that's easy. It holds the cell phone. I can just stick this to the table or stick this to the crate that I have up here. So I've been using this and it's works really well. I think these cost $20 online. It's by iAudi and I had a link to this in my post today. So, but I looked up on Amazon and you guys, mini tripods for cell phones are as cheap as $3. So I would just recommend stabilizing. It's different if you're giving a tour, but if you look at, at my first scope, which had no stabilization and all the ones that followed, yeah, it's, it's much improved if it's stabilized and not Blair Witch Project. So, <laughs> that's my tip. Curious, any of, you, have, any of you have a good tripod that you recommend? A good little trick for stabilizing? I know some of you have rigged up systems of balancing it on a cup or by a pillow. Um, would love to hear if any of you have figured it out. My friend Michelle used a little painter's easel today. Whatever works. You don't need to get too fancy. I need one. I just used a box and pushed it against something. Good. See? Doesn't have to get too fancy. Is it a gorilla cam? No, this isn't a gorilla 
um, tripod, but I love those and those would be great. I think that's the one I linked to for a cell phone tripod on my blog because it got great reviews. So yeah, there's plenty of options out there, but I would recommend it. I think it'll create a better user experience. Uh, tip number seven, hop into your settings and decide um, if you want to auto save your broadcast to your phone um, after it ends. And um, if you just go to your profile, scroll down to settings, there's a little um, switch you can toggle over to auto save. And um, it's a great way to be able to repurpose the content later on YouTube. Now, just a um, tip, the autosave doesn't save the hearts and the comments, which makes me very sad because I feel like that's such a key part of the interchange on Periscope. Um, but I learned from Alex Petit, who is a fantastic um, expert on Periscope. He's been on Periscope since the beginning in March. And actually when I was about to start this broadcast, I saw he was doing like five tips for beginner broadcasters. So we're scoping right now about the same exact thing. But follow him, he has a tutorial on his YouTube channel for how to save your broadcast with the hearts in the comments. And um, it's a very simple fix, especially if you have a Mac, it just involves using QuickTime and the lightning cord to plug your phone into your computer and you can save the hearts and comments as long as you do it within the 24 hour period before the broadcast ends. Alex Petit, so A-L-E-X-P-E-T-T-I-T-T. -T -T -T. And um, I actually linked to his Twitter in my post today. Can't link to Periscope yet, but link to his Twitter and you can um, definitely follow him on Periscope. He's Got a fantastic British accent too, and it's just so lovely. I've learned a lot from him. You're welcome. Okay, so moving along, moving along. I'm proud of us. I feel like this is going more quickly than I initially envisioned. Um, number eight would be to choose a captivating title, something that you think is gonna pull people in to watch your scope. Um, even if it's like, You'll never guess what my cat did this morning. It doesn't have to be too fancy, just something that you think will captivate viewers and entice them to click. And I would recommend pre-writing it out or pre-typing it out in an app like Evernote or your Notes app on your phone when you're calm, cool, and collected beforehand. Because I've definitely had that moment of, oh my goodness, I said my scope was gonna start at nine o'clock and it's, 9.05 and I'm running late and you type really fast and then you you can have typos and um, maybe it's not as strong of a title as you would have written if you had had more time. Um, I even like to use emoticons to help my scope stand out in the feed. If that's not your style, that's okay. I just noticed, wow, in my own home feed, the ones with emojis always jumped out at me. So I've just been trying that. I use hashtags so that when this auto tweets, um, people can come over from Twitter through um, the hashtag. So think about your title. Don't waste that opportunity to draw more people into your scope, to explain to them what it's gonna be about. Um, and I think it is worth just take you a quick minute to pre-write it out. Um, so, and then you'll copy and paste it where it belongs. And that leads us to our next tip, tip number nine. Where does the title belong? <laughs> Oh, and I had a friend today who um, accidentally did a Periscope um, and missed putting in a title because I will say it's not very clear. And if you're brand new to Periscope, you might miss it. So um, you're not gonna be able to see it right now, but I have a screenshot on my blog. And when you hit the broadcast button, at the very top, it says, what are you seeing now? And that's where your title goes. So it's not intuitive, it doesn't say title. And the screen, um, you know, it's a very faintly written font. It's easy to miss. So right before you hit start broadcast, make sure you have your title written out in what are you seeing now? Because the sad thing is if you start a broadcast and you forget it, it'll say untitled. And so it's just a missed opportunity and you can't go back and fix it. Womp womp. So it's okay if you've messed that up. I almost did myself. I was like, oh, what is this? Figured out it was the title but it's very, very easy to miss. So that's where you will copy and paste in um, your title. 
Now, thanks for the hearts. We're gonna, tip 10 is on that same broadcast screen. Some of you have been wondering how to get this link tweeted out. And if you look on that same screen, there's four little icons right above Start Broadcast. You can see the screenshot in my post. And the little Twitter bird, if you hit it and turn him from sort of like a faded gray to a bright white, that means when you start your broadcast, Periscope will auto post a link on your Twitter account to the broadcast. And I, I, Honestly, wasn't sure if people even really followed me on Twitter still. I haven't used it super very much lately. But after some broadcasts, I've been able to look um, in my statistics, and I was able to see how many online viewers have been watching my scopes. And it's been way more than I expected, and I think it is through Twitter. Um, and that's where the hashtags come in. So, so throw in a hashtag. Um, you never know who's going to be searching for Periscope tips or wedding planning and who will pop over and discover you and start to follow you. So definitely, if you're on Twitter, um, and even if you're not, I would join Twitter just so you can do that auto-tweet by selecting the Twitter bird. Woohoo! And that takes us through 10. Whew, we've made it halfway. <laughs> I feel like we need like seventh inning stretch. Ooh, we did it. Anything, any questions about what I've said so far or any like, any of them really like light bulb moment of like, oh, this is a huge tip I don't want to forget. It's been great seeing your hearts popping up. And uh, those of you just joining us, I'm Lauren from thinkingcloset.com. We're talking about everything I've learned in my first week of scopes. 20 tips, 20 quick tips for new broadcasters. And I'm giving myself a pat on the back that it's 7.30 and we're plowing through. Um, it won't let me tweet your cast. It says it's not connected. Oh, okay. So, so that probably has to do with your Twitter account not being synced. So um, do a little Google action to find out how to make sure it's synced. I know I, I was able to sync mine when I first started my scope when I first joined Periscope. So maybe if you skipped that step or maybe somehow it got disconnected, but definitely um, definitely get that squared away. And again, if, if it's too much of a headache, I don't think it'll kill you to do a scope without it, but going forward, it would be a great, a great tool for drawing in new people and um, spreading the word about your scopes across multiple platforms. All right, well, let's press on shall we? Tip number 11. Okay, this was a question that came up um, in our scope last night when we were talking about um, why Periscope is a game changer for bloggers and brands. And um, somebody had asked about location services and whether to have it turned on or turned off. So here's the deal. If you have location services turned on, that means that when you start a scope, you will show up on the world map that if you hit the globe and you see the map, you can see the red dots with all the scopes happening around the world. It's rather exciting. That was my first like aha moment about Periscope and I just thought, oh, how cool is it that I can go visit this person in Italy and then in Australia and then I can just random people all in live time around the world. It was just exciting. So it might be enticing but just be aware that if you do have location services on and you show up in the globe map, um, at least on iOS devices, I'm not sure about Androids, if I zoom in, you can see what, where they are on the street, actually. So, so just in terms of privacy and security, just be aware. You know, it's like probably perfectly safe to do a scope from the Eiffel Tower or I'm in Disney World and it, People are going to be looking at those locations anyway, but if you want to keep the, you know, your home address private, definitely turn it off. Now, creeptastic is right, Red Eye Baker. Now, how do we turn it off and on? So, when you first joined Periscope, it asked you if you wanted location services turned on or off. You might not remember what you had, and that's okay. Just know that at that screen, right before you hit broadcast, the same screen where you write your title, and you um, select for the auto post to Twitter, there's a little arrow that kind of looks like this 
on the left. And if it's grayed out, it's turned off. If it's bright white, it will give your location. So it's just a, like a little tip just to be aware of. Don't be freaked out by it. You have control. I just wanted you to know um, how to find it, how to turn it on and off. Um, that way you don't get any unwelcome visitors knocking on your front door. Ooh, yes, that is hashtag creeptastic. All right, so that, those were all tips on preparation. 11 tips. Now we're gonna move into tips for the actual broadcast, which I know a lot of you are like chomping at the bit. So tip number 12, know that whatever your first frame is in your video, that will become the thumbnail to your video. So, um, you know, my first scope, I was looking at my little kitty for a second um, before I double tapped the screen to flip it around. And so my kitty cat was the little thumbnail picture for my scope. And that shows up in the home feeds. That'll show up if you share um, the link on Twitter. So you can use that as an opportunity. Um, you know, I've held up little, like I've held up a little sign in front of the screen and um, you can have something funny going. And, and it's a little bit frustrating because a part of me wishes I could just start the Periscope while it's on my face instead of having to flip it around. But right now that's how the app works. Um, as far as I know, there's not a way to start with the screen flipped. So just use it as an opportunity to have something interesting. Um, you could have your computer screen open or um, <laughs> just a cute little figurine, something. But just know that that's what's gonna happen with your very first frame. Blog image, great idea. Yeah, so think about what you want. If, don't overthink it, I don't think it'll make or break it, but again, it's just an opportunity, um, I think, to make a more quality broadcast through that very first frame. Um, I also had mentioned the double tap. So the way to flip the screen is to double tap it. So if I wanted to send you guys back, and I'll do this right now just as a quick example, but the tip I'm gonna give related to the tap is just know that if you're talking, you wanna pause while it's flipping because your camera is gonna sort of black out for a moment as it switches sides and switches uh, microphones. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna pause talking and I'm gonna double tap the screen to flip it around. There it goes. And then I'm gonna double tap to bring it back. And I'm gonna pause talking. There you have it. So double tap. Now, I have to remind myself of that tip because it seems like at the end of every broadcast, um, I like just start flipping it just because I think like, ah, like this is how you stop it. It's not how you stop it, it's how you flip it. We'll talk about how you stop it in a moment. Thanks for the hearts I saw. Okay, tip number 13. This was a tip I believe I received from Alex um, Petit. And what he said is don't wait to start um, receiving notifications of people entering your scope before you start talking. I know the instinct might be like, oh, no one's here. I don't see a little number in the bottom right corner that shows me how many people are here. I don't see the little notifications of anyone joining me. So I'm just gonna sit here awkwardly and stare at the camera in silence and wait. And the reason you don't wanna do that is twofold. One, there are likely people watching online that you might not even know about and they're just like gonna quickly lose interest um, if you don't jump right in. Two, uh, the wonderful thing about Periscope is that you know these broadcasts stay on Periscope for 24 hours and so you're gonna get people replaying these videos and for those replays you know you want to jump right in you don't want to pause and wait because in the replay they're sitting there and they're ready to go so don't feel awkward just like oh I'm talking to no one I'm just talking to myself it is that instinct but it might even help you just to imagine someone you love on the other end watching even if they're not there use the use your imagination and just dive right in introduce yourself jump into your topic and before you know it people are going to start appearing I really did not think anyone would be in my first periscope but so far, I haven't been completely abandoned. And um, I mean, if it happens to you, it does, but 
I, I, I actually find that highly unlikely. And just know you won't be alone in the replays. So jump right in. Don't wait. Go for it. Tip number 14. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Love everyone's like using the hearts today. Um, don't be afraid. And this actually connects to what I just said. Don't be afraid to invite your viewers to engage with you through comments, through the heart love by tapping the screen, um, through sharing it. I know sometimes it feels awkward to ask for feedback or ask for help, um, but this is such a new platform for so many of us, we're still learning it. And you're gonna probably have people joining your scopes who've never been on it before, and it's just a good reminder. Um, I know sometimes I'll be jumping from broadcast to broadcast and anytime someone reminds me it's like oh yeah like I am enjoying this I do want to show love and I do want to engage in comments so don't don't be afraid to educate people on how to do it you know you can tell them like I say like swipe right if you're on an iOS device swipe up if you're on an Android and that's how you can share that's how you can follow me if you're not already following me and I'll explain about hearts I like to respond to hearts I think it's a good reminder for viewers who are watching that that um, is such helpful feedback. Don't be afraid to ask questions and invite people to comment. Um, that's, that's a good thing. And that's going to help build a very vibrant audience and an engaged audience and a really interesting conversation in your broadcast. So don't be afraid to ask for it. And, and I like put on my little card reminders of, oh yeah, like... Do a recap. You know, I put little heart symbols because I would quickly forget. I assume everyone knows that, but they don't. So there you have it. Um, also, you know, there, there might be viewers online who don't have the app yet, and they're going to be confused, like, where are all these hearts and comments coming from? So <laughs> it'll educate everyone. You're so organized. Oh, well, <laughs> it's really just out of, like, fear of failure that I try to have some semblance of control over a few things, but... Um, I'm just trying to share the organization that has been helpful. I've definitely gotten too organized and it wasn't helpful. So <laughs> thanks, Amanda. And thanks for those hearts, everyone. All right. Tip, quick tip for new broadcasters on Periscope. Number 15, remember that because it's live, you are going to continually having new people come in. And I've already actually kind of shared this through other tips, but just as I've been doing. Don't hesitate to reintroduce who you are and what you're talking about. Um, it's gonna, you're gonna feel like, oh, I'm being redundant, like everybody's gonna get bored. Um, but I know, you know, as people are watching your, your broadcast, not everyone is watching every second. They're making dinner, they're talking to the kids, and they might just have, you know, popped over from somewhere else. And so, Keep saying, hi, I'm Lauren. I'm from thinkingcloset.com. Welcome if you're just joining us. It's a great way to acknowledge um, the new folk who are just about, who've just popped in. Um, and again, those are good little reminders you can put on your table tent. Speaking of new people, tip number 16. We actually talked about this last night as well. Um, someone had asked, what happens if um, there's like a gross comment that comes through? Like a troll just happens upon your broadcast and, you know, writes something inappropriate or just annoying, and what do you do? I know that was something I was worried about, too. It feels a little bit out of control. Like, anyone in the world can come and talk? Like, ah, maybe I'm a little bit paranoid, but I always think of the serial killers and the creepers out there. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yes, you saw that last night. So... Here's what you do. If, if one comes through that you see before the comment feed disappears, you're going to just tap their comment and you have the option to block them. Blocked. And that means they can never come back. And I, I think that means they can never come back to your scopes at all. Troll blockers. Yes. <laughs> Get rid of the trolls. And you know what they say? Like, don't feed the trolls by engaging with them. So don't even acknowledge it. Like, I mean, if you wanted to be like, oh, that was gross. That's fine. But I wouldn't even talk to them or be like, hey, what are you doing here? That's exactly what they want. So shut them down. Block them. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So don't be afraid of that. Don't let that, like, fear of the unknown and the trolls 
Um, you know, the trolls are few and far between. Every so often they might show up. I haven't had one yet, and I'm thankful for that. I've only had lots of love and encouraging comments from you all, but I know it'll happen one day. I, it'll happen. And so I just have my, my trigger finger ready, and I'm going to say, as dear Emmeline said, goodbye, crazies. You're not welcome here. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Good. All right. So now that we're done with our trolls, tip, quick tip number 17. And this is hard for me, someone who's a little bit of a planner, but it's good. Don't be afraid to divert from the plan because that spontaneity in responding to the world around you, um, to responding to your viewers is a huge part of what makes Periscope so awesome. Ah, that's like my worst fear. Amanda says, I know. I have like a love-hate relationship with it. Um, and I, I kind of hate the feeling of like, oh no, like what if it becomes out of control and I, everybody starts to see that I'm not a good scoper and I'm like not able to keep the conversation rolling. Um, I'm such a prepared, organized freak. Yes, but the more you scope, the more you put yourself out there and get comfortable, um, the love will come in that that's where this like electric energy can happen and um, this wonderful exchange where there's a lot of collaboration and creativity. Uh, that's exactly what we talked about last night. Why I think that Periscope is such a game changer is because you're impacting me as I'm impacting you. Um, we're going places that we could have never gone before just by ourselves because we're together. So it's a balance. Um, and I think like as your audiences grow, it's going to become harder to um, navigate. And I would, I would encourage some of you to feel the freedom not to respond to every single comment. I think sometimes, um, you know, like as your audience grows, you're like, oh no, like I've, I've been acknowledging everyone and now it's getting out of control. Sometimes it just moves too fast. And sometimes um, it's better for the group as a whole if you can finish your train of thought. And, and then if that person had a question or a concern, like they can come back with it again. They understand, um, <laughs> you, you know, you're not superwoman. And so give yourself grace to not respond to every comment. Um, but still, it's a great opportunity to say like, okay, everyone's talking about this one thing I said and I've already moved on, but let me go back to it because clearly there's more in that. That's that gray area of Periscope that can intimidate so many of us. But let me tell you, as someone who's now on my seventh in a row, um, it's also the thrill, the thrill of it. So let that, um, channel that fear, channel that nervous energy into an opportunity to collaborate with your audience. Tip number 17 for new broadcasters. Okay, tip number 18, home stretch. If you reference a website or your blog or a blog post or an email sign up, especially if you're a blogger or a, a business owner, do yourself a favor, do your audience a favor by making those links really easy to remember. And the way to do that, my preferred way, is through a plugin called Pretty Link, Pretty Link. Hey, Abby Lawson for, to, for introducing this to me um, when I wrote my ebook. And basically what you can do with the plugin is you can redirect any long jumbled up messy link to a pretty link that looks like it lives on your blog. For example, um, I use MailChimp for my uh, email subscription service. So I just put in that jumbly, ugly link, and I said, instead, um, have them start thinkingcloset.com slash email. So now, if you were to go in and type in thinkingcloset.com slash email, it's gonna redirect you to the MailChimp link, but it was a pretty link to start. And so that's a great way to give um, you know, your audience, uh, invite them to come to your blog by just giving them easy links to remember. Like I said earlier, all of my three posts that I wrote today on Periscope all live at thinkingcloset.com slash Periscope. Um, I've, you know, I've done it for so many things. I, I use pretty links actually for my Amazon affiliate links now because the fun thing about it is it has a wonderful like um, counter so I can see how many times people have entered that link. And so I can see when I look through like, oh wow, people are really liking this one craft tool that I mentioned one time, I should use it again. So Pretty Link, it's free. I just use the light version. And I know we try not to 
bog down our blogs with too many plugins, but I do think that this one is extremely helpful for broadcasters. And I know there's other services out there that can simplify links, but Pretty Link is one to check out. That way it just makes it easy, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Okay. All right. Tip, quick tip number 19. And we're gonna we're getting in this finale of what do you do when you stop a broadcast? Well, it's easy to go in panic mode, like I said, or like I, I've been doing the like accidental double tap to flip the, the camera. But the way to end it is to swipe down. I'm not gonna do it right now for fear that I'll accidentally end it, but you're gonna swipe down on the screen and then a button will appear that says stop broadcast and it'll be bright red and you'll hit it and you'll wrap it up. But I've seen many scopes, my own included, of people like staring. I've done it too, because you're like, ah, I need to get out of here and I can't just run away. I have to somehow figure out a way to end it. So to end it, think of it like the curtain is lowering, the show is over. You're gonna pull that screen down and hit stop. Easy, done, okay. Now this last tip, is tip number 20 for new broadcasters on Periscope. This is the tip of what I think you should do after your Periscope, after your scope finishes. Once you have it under your belt, schedule your next one. And like I said earlier, I, I would urge you all to give yourself some sort of challenge, some number of scopes you wanna do to give this platform a fair shot. I see a lot of you feeling like, Yes, I get this. This is scary, but I think I should do this. Um, because you're not gonna become an awesome uh, broadcaster overnight. None of us are. This is so new. Everyone's making mistakes. Everyone's learning. But I know my own confidence on this platform has grown tenfold just in seven scopes. Now, I don't even think you have to do seven in seven days. I think, what if you said, I'm gonna try to do one scope every Sunday afternoon for a month. Give it a go. It's, you're gonna have mistakes. You're gonna feel like, oh, that didn't go so well. Your inner critic is gonna jump in with all of that negativity. But you say, you know what? I'm gonna stick with it for a month. And I can almost guarantee you that if you give it a, give it a good old college try, that by the end of that month, you will have really grown in your skills, in your confidence, and it's gonna start to become really fun, um, even if it wasn't fun to start. Oh, yay, hey, Tasha. So tip 20. Schedule the next one. It's gonna boost your confidence, even if you feel like, that went terrible. Well, you committed to do one, one a week for a month, do it. Um, and I think if you can kind of push through those insecurities that will rise up, um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be worth it in the end. Um, so those are the 20 tips that I had to share. It actually was hard to keep it to 20. Um, and, I, and I kind of cheated a little bit in my blog post and just added like a final charge that says, if you hear anything, um, hear this. But, you know, I wanted to share that like, um, I've, I've had a lot of moments with Periscope, great advice, woohoo, um, where like things started to feel like they were going terribly wrong. <laughs> And things like there were things I wish I could have edited out. Edited out. Those of you who were at the dance party, ah, those of you who were at the dance party know like I started to break out in hives. Maybe it's even happening again. It happened again last night too. But um, that's part of the excitement of Periscope um, because you're inviting people in to see the real you, right? And the real you. At least the real me breaks out into hives when she gets a little nervous. And, um, you know, the real me says, um, and like. Thinking of how I can use this with nursing students. Awesome. That's my mom. She's always thinking of ways to better herself. Um, no, I wasn't at Haven, Tasha. I, I missed you all. I wish I could have been there, hopefully next year. Um, but I really do believe those moments where we can be honest and with our flaws, with our mistakes, with our hives, that's what's gonna bond us um, to each other. And I know when I see very human moments, my thought is not like, oh, like she's a hot mess. I have hearts for that person. And I just wanna send a million hearts to them because I get it, I've been there. 
Um, so free yourself of this idea that you need to be perfect and that you need to present a persona that's super put together. Um, do a periscope after the gym for your first one. Do it without makeup. Um, you know, push yourself to let the walls down. And I, I can tell you that it's going to create a really safe environment and a really authentic environment. Um, and it, that those are the kind of scopes where I want to hang out, where people are showing the real them and responding to like the real things that are going on. Um, that's, that's what excites me about this medium. I don't know if it does. If it excites you, let me know. Show me some hearts. If, that's, if that authentic connection um, is what's drawing you to this platform. Here they come. There's always like a little bit of a delay. Yay. Okay. So your turn, guys. Like, what tips have you picked up? Those of you who've done a scope or two. Um, what questions do you have if you haven't done one and you're like, wait, she didn't address this very important thing. Yes, Tasha loves the authenticity. Awesome info. Oh, Nana's Crafty Nook. Thank you. I'm so glad. I really wanted to share some practical things as well as motivational things. I feel like we all we all need it. It's this is risky business, but it's it's worthwhile. Um, and uh, I know some of you are probably t tickety typing things. Great ideas. Thanks, Jen. Break a leg on your scope when it comes up. And, um, and if you want to reference any of these, like I said, three posts went live today. They are um, all living over at thinkingcloset.com slash Periscope, the beginner's guide to, per to Periscope, um, why it's going to be a game changer, and 20 quick tips for new broadcasters, which is what we talked about tonight. So this is all over there if you want to pin it, if you want to share it. Um, thanks for jumping in there and answering that question. How to send hearts? Tap the screen. Balancing Bedlam got it. Um, and so, yeah, you, it actually doesn't even have to be uh, the, any corner. You can... uh, oops. I just tapped the screen. Can you search follow other scope? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Uh, can you ask that again? Sorry. Oh, okay. I think I understand what she was asking. If you can follow other scopers while you're watching, yes, you just click their name. Great tips. I kept getting knocked out trying to scroll back to the broadcast. I think um, I've been able to follow people during live broadcasts just by yeah, clicking their name and hitting follow. But if it's kicking you out, it might be an issue with the app. Um, not 100% certain. I, I know they're still working out a lot of kinks, especially if you're on Android. I know that was a later release in May, and a lot of people have reported little issues. But yeah, typically if you just click on someone's name, you should be able to follow them, hitting like the little person icon with the plus sign. So um, yeah, this is great. So, so much information. And um, any of you have any uh, people you're following on Periscope that you've really loved watching, you know, whether there's someone who's like an entrepreneur or business owner, or just, we were talking about celebrities to follow on Periscope. I'd love to know who they are. Um, I'm already following something like 300, but I, I'm just trying to soak up as much as I can and just love discovering new people to follow. Ooh, okay. Jen says Jennifer Priest. Going to check it out. Going to... Thankfully, this is, uh, I'm going to save this video and rewatch it. Um, something we talked about last night is uploading them to YouTube. And actually, now I'm remembering, um, we, someone had asked about that in the beginning. But um, I'm actually going to dedicate a full screencast video tutorial to how I create the little template that I do. If you go to my YouTube channel, The Thinking Closet, you'll see I have like a little phone and I plop the video in the phone. Um, it took me, I had to pull an all-nighter to figure it out, but I figured it out. And so um, it's too long to explain right here, right now. But you don't even have to do anything fancy like that. Um, you can just upload your videos directly to YouTube um, straight from your phone. How did you make your YouTube? Oops, reading my mind. Yeah, so I, I, I love that people are curious about how to create sort of like a branded template more than just the two black bars that come up. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on it. Um, I have, if you check, you know, my channel, you'll see I have 
you know, follow me on Periscope and I have my at thinking closet and then I have my blog email. So, um, it's a great way for, to use it almost like as promotion or advertising space. And I think it just looks so much prettier <laughs> than the black bars. So that'll be a separate tutorial. Um, the short story, if you're really good at iMovie, it has to do with the using the picture in picture feature. And if that means nothing to you, don't worry. Um, but if you're super savvy, that may, that may like trigger a spark and you can figure it out. So awesome branding. Looking forward to the tutorial. Great. Um, I full disclosure, I probably can't get to it until August, but it will, it will come. And I think as more broadcasters are using the medium, they're going to be sharing how they've done theirs. I know I watched, uh, Chris Ducker did a scope yesterday and shared how he did his and he used different, um, programs than I did. And then I have, but, um, people are sharing these things and, um, I think you can, there's going to be more and more resources out there for those of us who want to sort of take Periscope to the next level. So thanks again, y'all for being here. Okay, good. We hit my goal of an hour <laughs> and, um, I, yeah, it's been great engagement. I'm so, I'm so glad that you jumped in on discussion and all the heart love has meant so very much to me. I'm glad this was helpful. I'll be, um, you can, you know, rewatch this for 24 hours and I'll be popping it up onto YouTube, dropping it in the post. We're getting a weird shadow action as the sun sets. Embrace it. It's the real deal. It's Periscope. You can see my sweaty face. This is me. <laughs> this is the raw deal. So looking forward to seeing all your scopes. I, I would love to support you all as you've supported me. Yes, Jen, I would love to see it. I'll make sure I'm following you so I can get notifications. Great hanging out. Have a great evening. You all too. Thanks for being here. And um, if you enjoyed this, feel free to share it if you haven't already. Um, that way we can get the word out and grow this platform. Huge. Because I think the bigger it gets, the better it will get. And uh, my son thinks you're a YouTube star. Aw. Love that I have celeb status with your sweet son. Aw. Great tips. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so much love. Well, I'm sending hearts to you guys. I actually have an idea for how I'm going to try to do that in the future. But sending you some hearts of love, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Those of you um, who missed our dance party, you got to get in on the next one. And those who were there, you need to come back. So I'm actually not going to have great or I don't know the internet connection I'll have that night. I'm not going to be at home, but um, I will do my very best. So if something weird comes up and I don't have internet access, I will send out a tweet to let you guys know. But until then, let's plan on it. Confetti. <laughs> I know. Send confetti to the screen. I've thought about that. Um, but plan on Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern. The theme that Jackie at Teal and Lime and School of Decorating picked is to do musical theater dancing. So... Last week, it, or this week, it was um, just songs that get me dancing. And if you want to watch the replay, it's up on YouTube. It's really fun. Um, but we're going to do some name that tune and have a dance party. It'll be great fun. It's very important to start the week off on the right dancing foot. So, see you at the dance party, and I'll see you in your future scopes, new broadcasters. Scope on. You can do it as my tripod falls. So excited. Whoop, whoop. Congrats to those of you who did your first scopes today, too. I'm so proud of you. I got to see several of them. And break a leg tonight, Cammie. I'm so proud of you. Eek. You can do it, girl. Silence that inner critic and just dive in. Be your honest, awesome self. Because you are enough. <laughs>